In 1950, Enrico Fermi looked up to the stars and asked this simple question, where is everybody? This became known as the Fermi Paradox. If the universe is so vast and old, why haven't we encountered alien civilizations? Xi Jin Lu took this haunting question and transformed it into one of the most chilling answers in science fiction. Let's explore the dark forest, and why the Fermi Paradox made it one of the greatest hard sci-fi books ever. While debates persist over the exact definition of hard science fiction, the genre is fundamentally characterized by its commitment to scientific accuracy and logical rigor. Many authors use this scientific grounding primarily as an aesthetic choice to enhance their world building. However, in the dark forest, Xi Jin Lu transforms scientific principles into something far more essential and far more terrifying, making these scientific principles the driving force of the plot itself. This is Sean from If Else. If you haven't already seen my video on the three body problem, please check it out. I'd also be interested in hearing your thoughts in the comments down below about Xi Jin Lu's work. The Dark Forest opens in the aftermath of humanity's first contact with the Trisolaran civilization, picking up where three body problems revelation of impending doom left off. The common era of human history has officially ended, replaced by the Crisis Era period defined by the knowledge that alien invaders are approaching Earth. This creates a uniquely terrifying scenario. Humanity knows with absolute certainty that extinction level hostile forces will arrive in 400 years, yet must somehow maintain civilization and develop its defenses. To make the situation worse, the Trisolarans have already infiltrated Earth with sophisticated quantum devices called Sophons. These devices allow the Trisolarans to spy on all human communication and prevent advances in scientific research, leaving humanity to face its greatest challenge partially blind. However, humanity possesses one crucial advantage, deception. The Trisolarans evolved in such a way that made their thoughts and communication inseparable. Every member of their species broadcasts their thoughts openly to all others. As a result, they have no concept of lies or misdirection. The very idea of speaking something different from what you're thinking is alien to them. This strange limitation becomes their critical weakness, as they're fundamentally unable to understand or anticipate human strategies based on deception, leading UN Secretary General Say to declare a global strategy of disguise, misdirection and deception. The subject of this misdirection and deception will be the entire world, both enemy and ally, until a huge bewildering maze of illusions is erected to make the enemy lose its judgement. In order to implement this strategy, the nations of the world have agreed to the Wallfacer Project. The Wallfacer Project emerged as humanity's most audacious exploitation of this Trisolaran weakness. Four individuals were selected and granted virtually unlimited resources and authority by the United Nations, each tasked with developing a unique strategy to defeat the alien invasion. But the project's true brilliance lay in its fundamental rule. These wall facers were forbidden from ever revealing their actual plans. Every public action they took Every project they initiated could be either genuine strategy or elaborate misdirection. By keeping their true intentions locked within their minds, the one place the Trisolarans couldn't observe, these four people became humanity's ultimate weapons of deception. The UN selected four individuals as wall facers, each bringing unique perspectives and capabilities to humanity's defense. Frederick Tyler, the former US Secretary of Defense, was renowned for his revolutionary revolutionary Tyler principle of military technology. His theory proposed that technological advancements disproportionately benefits smaller countries and numerically inferior forces. A concept with obvious implications for Earth's vastly outnumbered positions against the Trisolarans. Manuel Ray Diaz, Venezuela's president, had personally validated Tyler's principle when he successfully repelled an American invasion through superior tactical innovation 
despite commanding a smaller force. His practical experience in asymmetric warfare made him an ideal candidate for facing an overwhelmingly powerful alien civilization. Bill Hines, a Nobel Lord whose groundbreaking work bridged in neuroscience and physics, brought not only his scientific brilliance but also his experience as the former president of the European Union. His dual expertise in human consciousness and fundamental physics positioned him uniquely to understand both humanity's limitations and potential. The final choice was perhaps the most intriguing, Luo Ji, a Chinese astronomer and cosmic sociologist whose selection puzzled most observers. Unlike his fellow wall facers, Luo Ji lacked obvious qualifications or achievements. However, one fact justified his appointment above all others. The Trisolarans had already attempted to assassinate him, marking him as the only human they truly feared. This singular distinction suggested he possessed some knowledge or insight that terrified even an advanced alien civilization. Though he initially approached his appointment with indifference, he would soon discover why even the masters of a distant star system trembled at his potential. Humanity's grand deception faced an internal threat, the ETO, an organization of human defectors who viewed the Trisolaran invasion as Earth's salvation. They created the Wall Breakers, individuals assigned to decode and expose each Wall Facer's true strategy. Every Wall Facer faced a dedicated Wall Breaker, except for Luo Ji. In a twist of irony, the Trisolarans designated Luo Ji as his own wall breaker, knowing that he remained unaware of why they feared him. His apparent apathy toward his appointment and initial reluctance to develop any strategy made him paradoxically the most dangerous wall facer, a man who didn't yet understand his own significance. Thus began an unprecedented psychological chess match. The wall facers orchestrated increasingly elaborate schemes that could either be genuine strategies or masterful deceptions. While the wall breakers scrutinized every action, every project, and every statement through the all-seeing eyes of the alien Sophons. This created a shadow war of minds, where the true battlefield existed not in physical space, but in the labyrinthine depths of human deception and counter deception. Among all the strategies humanity devised to confront the Trisolaran threat, it was Luo Ji's approach which stood apart. Through its profound understanding of a deeper cosmic truth, his breakthrough emerged not from physics or traditional military strategy, but from a conversation he had years prior with Ye Wen Jie, the woman who first betrayed humanity's existence to the cosmos. In that forgotten exchange lay the seeds of the dark truth about our universe. Survival is the primary need of civilization. Civilization grows and expands, but the total matter in the universe remains constant. He fixed on these two sentences, the axioms Ye Wen Jie had proposed for cosmos civilization. At the heart of Luo Ji's strategy lies one of the universe's most perplexing questions, the Fermi Paradox. A seemingly simple question, in a universe so vast and ancient, teeming with billions of galaxies and potentially habitable planets, where is everyone? Why haven't we encountered or detected any signs of alien civilization? By the crisis era, humanity have encountered the Trisolarans, but that does not make the question any less valid. Why have we only met the Trisolarans is just as pressing. The Fermi Paradox has numerous proposed solutions. The Great Barrier Theory suggests that interstellar distances are simply too vast to overcome, even with advanced technology. The sheer scale of space creates an insurmountable wall between civilizations. 
Meanwhile, the Great Filter Hypothesis proposes that intelligent life must survive a series of nearly impossible odds to reach an advanced state. 65 million years ago, Earth faced such a filter when an asteroid impact triggered a mass extinction event, wiping out the dinosaurs, suggesting that cosmic catastrophes may routinely eliminate civilizations before they can reach the stars. While more solutions to the Fermi paradox exist, Luo Ji was concerned with testing the most terrifying solution, the dark forest theory. This theory suggests that the cosmos teems with civilizations, all of them deliberately silent and inherently hostile. Like hunters in a dark forest, these civilizations maintain absolute silence for fear of revealing their position to something more dangerous than themselves. Yet, simultaneously upon detecting any other form of intelligent life, they will strike to eliminate it without hesitation or mercy. This seemingly paradoxical combination of terror and aggression isn't born from malice, but from the cold equations of cosmic survival. In a universe of unknown threats, the safest civilization is one that eliminates all potential competitors while remaining invisible itself. Interesting point to note here, this theory existed before Xi Jin Lu wrote the Remembrance of Earth's Past series, but due to the series success, the solution in popular culture and academia has been coined the Dark Forest Hypothesis, named after the book. To prove his his theory about the cosmos, Luoji devises an elegant and simple experiment. Using his unlimited wall facer authority, he commands a powerful transmission array to send a message to a star system 50 light years away. The content of this message is deceptively basic, just three dots and an arrow, a clear signature of design by intelligent life. But this seemingly modest transmission is actually a cosmic trigger, one that will either validate his terrifying hypothesis about the nature of the universe or prove him catastrophically wrong. The beauty of his plan lies in its simplicity. He's not sending a message to communicate, but to demonstrate what happens when civilizations reveal themselves. Due to being targeted by a weaponized virus and knowing the effects of this spell would only become visible in 50 years at the earliest, Luoji enters into stasis. Two centuries later, Luoji awakens from hibernation, only to find humanity has completely transformed. Earth's technological progress has been remarkable. Within the constraints imposed by the Sophons, massive space fleets patrol the solar system, and orbital habitats dot the skies, though fundamental physics remains frustratingly beyond reach. In this new era of apparent strength, humanity has grown confident, perhaps arrogant. The Wallfacer project has been disbanded, the ETO now exists only in history books, and the intricate games of deception have given way to military preparation. The leadership of Earth believes that the coming conflict will be decided through conventional warfare amongst the stars. And for a moment, Luo Ji trusted them. He was relieved, relieved that he didn't need to enact his plan. That is, until the Doomsday Battle. The battle to end all battles, a catastrophic defeat that shatters humanity's illusions of military preparedness. The Trisolaran fleet, demonstrating technological superiority beyond Earth's darkest fears, obliterated humanity's space forces with almost casual ease. In the aftermath of this devastating loss, with panic spreading across Earth, humanity's leaders turn their desperate eyes to their last remaining option, the forgotten wallfacer whose mysterious power once terrified their enemies. Luoji's time has finally Finally come. As Luoji receives confirmation that his experimental star has been mysteriously destroyed, he finally confirms the true power his knowledge of the Dark Forest provides him. With the Trisolaran fleet now just years away from Earth, he unveils his desperate 
gambit surrounding the sun with a network of nuclear armed asteroids. His message to the invaders is clear. If they attack Earth, he will detonate these devices, revealing our system's position to the cosmos. It is a cosmic flare that would make our entire solar system visible across the universe. Through the dark lens of cosmic game theory, Luoji transforms mutually assured destruction into something far more terrifying than a nuclear apocalypse. His threat is elegant in its simplicity. If the Trisolarans attack Earth, he will reveal both civilizations' existence to the cosmos, making them visible in the dark forest. And somewhere in that darkness, advanced civilizations lurk with weapons beyond imagination. Following the same brutal logic that has kept the cosmos silent, eliminate any detected civilization before it can become a threat. Faced with this cosmic checkmate, the Trisolaran fleet alters course, retreating into the void. Humanity enters the deterrence era, having survived not through military might or technological advancement, but by understanding the terrible truth. In a universe of predators, invisibility is survival. The Fermi paradox weaves through every strand of the dark forest, like a dark thread, transforming from philosophical question to existential horror. From Ye Wen Jay's first insights into cosmic sociology, through the Wallbreaker program's systematic dismantling of conventional military strategies, to the final devastating revelation. Si Jin Lu builds his story on this single scientific observation. The universe should be teeming with life, yet we hear nothing. But rather than using hard science fiction merely as window dressing, Si Jin Lu transforms the Fermi paradox into the engine of his narrative. The mathematics of alien civilization becomes the source of both plot and terror, each scientific principle clicking into place like the tumblers of a cosmic lock until the horrifying truth is revealed. This is hard science fiction at its finest, where scientific concepts don't just define the setting, but drive the story itself towards its chilling conclusion. Si Jin Lu's exploration of the Fermi paradox ultimately transcends traditional science fiction to touch something more primal, a uniquely cosmic strain of existential horror. Unlike Lovecraft's supernatural terrors, the dread in the dark forest emerges from scientific rationality, the mathematics of survival in an infinite universe. The most terrifying aspect isn't the existence of alien civilizations, but the cold equations that compel them to destroy one another. The novel leaves readers with a haunting new perspective of the night sky, where silence isn't empty, but rather evidence of a universe so dangerous that every civilization must hold its breath. This has been Sean from If Else. Thank you so much for your support on my previous video. Please subscribe and like. I really appreciate it. I'm a small channel and I have some big goals for this year. Thank you.